right? This is Anthony Gray, another episode of Grayscale. You have my heater going on back there. That's why you hear the, the um, that soft air droning sound. Anyway, <clears throat> I guess I'm going to return to some kind of normalcy in painting, okay, and show you um, what I can do with uh, a projector. If you look on one of the uh, clips, I think it's a one-on-one -on -one talk. I talk about uh, having a projector. And what I did is I downloaded a cottage from on uh, online. It's one of those, um, one of the, um, actually I just searched it on Google. And I looked for a cottage. All right. And that's what's on the board here. The board is, believe it or not, it's a, it's a uh, bright yellow, neon yellow, two-ply uh, Bristol board. All right, I covered it twice with uh, white gesso. All right, and I got the picture. I downloaded the picture on my hard drive. Downloaded it from the hard drive to a USB stick. Okay, and then I'm going to take that same picture because it's on my hard drive. And I'm, I uploaded it to the cloud. I'm gonna put it on the phone so I have something to look at once I'm done with all of this. Anyway, it's daylight as I'm I'm, I'm filming this. Yeah. I have the picture projected as you can faintly see on the board here. All right. Now I also have a backlight that's in back of the camera, which is why you can see me pretty, uh, my hand pretty good. All right. Um, I'm going to turn off the overhead light up here and just have that backlit camera. Okay. Now you should be able to see it even better. All right. Now I do have it on pause. Okay. Now with the the uh, projector, you can mess with the lens and get it as blurry or as sharp as you would like. Obviously, you would get it the sharpest. Okay. Um, <coughs> with this particular <coughs> uh, um, projector, I wanted to keep it on the picture, so I you would have to play. But what it will do is. Um, play for like 10-15 seconds maybe and then shut off and go back to his normal uh, menu screen so I would have to make it play and loop around so I have it on pause you can also zoom in and zoom out to whatever size you want appropriate to the size of the paper I have it zoomed out uh, pretty far actually because it, it, this area can actually fill up a 60 inch viewing area alright you can also move your projector backwards and forth to get to the right size that you want okay I'm gonna turn off the backlight and let you see how bright that picture is on that paper now you can absolutely see it okay and what I'm gonna do while it's that dark is when I sketch our, uh, this this cottage onto the paper all I want is the general shape Okay, the outside shape. That's all I want. The outside shape. I don't care what's going on in here. I'll deal with that later. That's not what I'm looking for right now. Just get the outside shape. I'll even debate whether I want the second one in here or not. All depends. I can either add it or take it away. It doesn't matter to me. I want the little uh, well here. Okay. And that's all I want. I want the shape of the cottage. Maybe the shape of the well. And that is all. Because what I'm going to do is tape it after I um, trace these two objects. I'll tape it, cut the tape, and then I'll do my painting first. Save the cottage for last. Alright, so when I get back, okay, this is one way how to transfer a particular drawing or whatever onto your, onto your board. And you can do so many things with the projector say if you want the cottage but you want a different background you just get another background pay put it on there scale it to whatever degree you want it and then you go forward from there so many endless possibilities to make art your own instead of being a direct copy of somebody else's okay very simple to do when I get back I'll have this traced on here I'll tape it I'll show you um, what I do to tape it, then I'll cut it, and we'll go on from there. But I just wanted to show you um, how to do it with the projector, and I'll be right back. 
Okay, we're back once again. Believe it or not, I just blocked in what I wanted blocked in. I did a little extra. Only took a few minutes, maybe three minutes. I blocked in the outside area of what I want, including the uh, well. All right. Forgive my skunk cap. Yes, I do wear it. I'm going to take some two-inch tape. going to place said tape firmly on the paper take exacto knife very sharp be careful with this because you're on paper okay and I'm gonna cut out this image when you cut I'll take one, make sure your knife is very sharp. Okay? I've been doing this for a while. So, I can pretty much cut it. Okay? I'm only concentrating on the outside shape. Okay? Now, your objects, depending on what type of brush you use, tend to grow on you. Just be mindful. Try to get your cutting as exact as possible. Okay. If you got pockets where the color is going to show through like what I'm doing right now, be as exact as you can. Possibly can. You want that to stay while everything else is uh, to peel away here. Now if you did it right, you should not have much trouble. It should come off relatively easily like so. Okay. Try to get all the little corners to meet. And it should come off much like this. And it's not going to go anywhere. Alright, that's what you want. Okay. The paint, the majority of it, because it's going to be dark anyway, it's going to cover up your pencil lines. Don't fret. Don't worry about it. Cold word, do not panic. Okay. Large area. It's two inch wide tape. Now, it all depends on how you want to go about it. If you want to go about it lengthwise. Vertical rather, or go about it lengthwise, whatever is your preference. Okay. I try not to waste so much tape. So you, you go, go about it the way you feel. That will benefit you. All right. In doing this, I don't like to really <coughs> recut. So I try to get it as close to the edge of the previous band as I possibly can. Get it as flat as possible. Alright. But at this stage, you really don't want any, 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 any real problems, any hiccups. Okay. All you're doing is just covering up the pencil line. Try not to get any wrinkles like that. But make it as smooth as possible so you don't get any air pockets. You really don't want any bleed through. Though it may happen, you don't want it. The, the air pockets here, the paint will definitely come through. Okay. I'm just using my nails, flatten out that, that air pocket there. Just keep going. It doesn't take 
long, as you can see. As flat as possible. I'm not concerned about this edge. Remember, the most important thing is the outside edge. Get that outside edge. Don't worry about the details. You're going to be painting all the stuff over it anyway. Depending on what you want to put there as your background. Alright. This is just one way of how to get it done. Like I said, you can actually take a pic, an actual picture, put um, graphite in the back of the picture, take the picture up there and just trace it with a ballpoint pen or pencil or you got one of those objects with the, with the little ball on it. I can't, I forget right now what it's called. This. Put it right on there. Make sure it's on there pretty firm. Take your nice little surgical implement, the exacto knife. Your best friend. I'm gonna go right from the corner, going this way with it first. Like I said, I've been doing this for a while, and uh, I know pretty much how much pressure to put on it. A very sharp exacto uh, knife. Will cut through this, as they say, like a hot knife through butter. Be extremely careful. It's not a toy. It will take off a few layers of skin with one simple mistake. It will cost you. Okay. Just carefully peel it away, like so. There you go. Throw the excess in the trash. Don't need it. Let's go to the outside edge here. All I'm doing is following the line. I'll do it with my right hand. Now I know I'm going over all the pieces of tape, so you have to kind of Put a little more pressure than you usually would. Get it as close as possible. Keep going. Keep going. Make sure to end. All of this you want to keep. I always place my exacto knife in the same spot every time. Like you, you know, just make it a habit doing so. Just keep it, keep it moving, keep it going. This is, this, this is me with lack of nails, but it's alright. And I'm taking off at least some of the some of the picture, which you don't want to do, or some of the paint, but it won't matter. It'll be covered up and you'll never tell, so it's okay. That's it. That's all that's needed. part that disturbs me is that little piece, that little tear. I was going to get that out of there. There. Now I'm not bothered anymore. Okay. The whole thing took less than maybe four minutes. Okay. You see clearly your pencil marks show through, even with the masking tape on it. Alright. But that's basically all I needed. Alright. Now, if you want to do the picture the way you've seen it on the photograph, if you got an iPad, some kind of uh, whatever kind of pad or a big cell phone, whatever, you place it somewhere, keep the screen constantly on, and you can go from there. Or you can add whatever background uh, you, you wish to have. Okay. This one had nice, a nice little uh, circular stuff going on happening with it. 
but because of the uh, measurement of this paper and the, and, and the measurement of the photograph itself, I can't get too many of those on there, so I'm not necessarily worried about it. I'll put something else totally different there. All right. Because you got to think also, my border, this is one inch tape, my border is here and in here. So I don't have much green to work on here. Okay, so it'll just probably be just regular green grass, something I'll put over there, or maybe a rock or two, something. All right. But I did like the way the background was kind of glowy and out of focus a little bit. Some of the trees were glowy, out of focus, but the, uh, the trees in the foreground were a little sharper, a little crisper. I'll probably work with that. And so when we get back, I will uh, glaze some of this up, and we'll get right to work. All right. Hey, how you doing? We're back. <clears throat> what I'm going to do, for starters, is use a nice uh, slew of color. Uh, I'm going to wet the surrounding area with the uh, gel mix. It's the gel mix with a little water okay put it right over the house you don't need too much of this stuff I'm just looking to see how much I got slathered uh, all over the place don't need too much like I said I'm gonna take some white okay cause I got I got the picture over here on the side I'm going to cover the majority of this with white to maintain a glowing feel when I add the other colors in and blend them in. Okay. Just around here, this area. Now, I'm going to take just a tiny tip of red, the smallest amount. I'm wiping most of it off my brush. I just want a tiny glow of red in here. And you should be able to see a little bit of that tint in there. That's all I want. Just a tiny tint of red in there. The more you rub in with the white, the fainter it gets. All right. I'm going to use maybe another little slight tint of blue uh probably around this area in here i gotta do it where i don't want to constantly get in your way Just a little tint of blue in here okay remember i still got some of that white i'm gonna use some medium just to soften it up a little bit up around here, all right. Just to soften it. And let's get it, get some more medium. Just tapping into a little more medium because I want it to be a little slick, and I want to blend it a little more. Okay, I'm rinsing off my brush. Set the brush down. Get my soft blender brush. I'm gonna start going in small rhythmic circles. All I'm doing is smoothing out the streaks. And, if anything, I want it to blend in with the white that's already on the paper. Okay. That's all I'm doing is going in a circular motion. Blend some of that color. More concerned, always, as usual, about the outside edge. 
okay. Something like this. That's about it. Got right, my nice little smooth little glow here. I might want to tease a little more red in there. Just a bit. On the one side of the brush. Only the slightest tip in the red. And I just want to add a little more of that red color into that. Nothing but medium. Okay. Now I'm going to I'm resting off the brush again. Wiping the brush off. I'm going to put some white right around the outside edge of the red. No medium, just the white. Right around the outside edge, like so. Just pat it in there. Okay. Right around that outside edge. Put the brush back in some water. I'm going outside where the white is. I want to blend it in with that red. Put a little out there in the blue, but I want to really blend it in there with that red really, really good. So I still got some of that red tint in there. That's about all you need right there. That's all I want, just a little red tint. still looking at the picture over here. I just really, if anything, I really want that glow. Alright. Just wiping the brush, getting a lot of that, that white paint out of there. I am going to get a little bit of white, tap it right into this area. Let's get the corner right here. I just want to make sure I'm out of your way so you can see what I'm doing. It's right in here. Okay. Put the brush back in the water. Very lightly with this with uh, this makeup brush. It's nothing but a little makeup brush I got from Walmart. Alright. Just want to Blow that up a little bit. Now, that I've did that, I will go back. Let's put this brush down for a second. I gotta cleanse that brush too. I'm going to get some phthalo blue, some yellow. a nice dark green color and I'll take some of that white and mix it in there. I want a nice type of green. Okay. I'm going to dab some green up in this area here. A lot of it in this area, right in here. All in here. Do I still got tape on that part? I believe I do. Let's see. Maybe not. No, I don't. I thought I did. No worries. All in here. That's in that green in this area in here. Touch of it up here. Just like that. I'm just dipping into a little water. Smooth out a little bit. All in here. Just a little. I'm dipping into the medium. medium breaks up some of this paint and move it around a little bit. Pretty much what I'm doing right now. I'm only dipping the edge 
into the medium. Okay, that's all. As you can see, it moves it around, loosens it up. Okay. And while it's moist, go back into my little circular motion. Smooth out some of those edges. Around here, smooth it out. Dip into the medium, around this edge in here. And just smooth it out. It breaks up the paint. But I can spread it out. Okay. Soften up some of those edges in here. Like right around in there. And smooth it right out. Don't necessarily want to kill all that red. Right in here. And smooth all that out. I'm dipping more into the medium. Coming here in this corner. I'm pressing down a little bit, just stirring up, breaking up some of that color. As you see, it breaks up some of that dark color. And I'm just twisting, turning, lightly. It's like circles. Getting rid of, getting rid of uh, some of that harshness. Rinse off the brush. I'm going to get a little bit of white. No medium, just the white. And then these areas here, just a couple of pats. Okay. Just around here. All those edges in there. Take my brush again. Circular motion very lightly. Just blend it right in. Here in the corner. Take it, carry it in the inside a little bit. This is not the titanium white, it's the lighter white. Transparent, which is fine. Just a little more tapping. Just here and there. In circles. I want type of a, a, a light greenish glow in that section. Maybe a little, little highlighty glow up in here, in this, up in this corner here. Let's take it and just spin it around. If anything, I want to smooth out those edges. All of this madness will make sense in a few seconds. Now, I'm going to rinse off this brush, both of them. off this, uh, this makeup brush, this little mop brush here. Got me a little rake down here, a grate. Get most of that color off of there. Looks like a wet chipmunk or something like that, but when it dries, it dries back to its original shape and form. Doesn't take as long either. I just rinse it off really good. And just let it naturally dry. I always have a standby. Now, I want to add some leaves into this uh, background. I'm going to use the trusty, what is this, number 10? Number 8 filbert? It's number 10 filbert. I am going to tap in lightly. 
maybe a little bit of, uh, I got a little bit of red, okay, so I'm going to get a tad of white, mix it in there with that red, a tinge of blue, and some yellow, so I want my green to have a lot of red in it, but I don't really want to gray it, or brown it, so I'm going to get a little bit of red, more red rather, but I want it to be a light uh, red, so I'm using a little more white, brighten it up a little bit, even some more white, almost almost a pastel like uh, white, and I just want to add in this glow here, just like this, I want to block in a little bit, so just light pattern of, of leaves somewhere in here. Kind of go out a little bit. Maybe a little bit in here. Uh, maybe a couple of, couple of pieces in here. But not necessarily touching here. Just out on the outskirts out here. Uh, maybe a flute, few dangling right around here somewhere just like that no more no less all right it's the side of the house so you got a couple out here a couple dangling around here maybe some here all right my phone clicked off i'll just give it a quick swipe here all right now i'm going to start adding in some greens all up in here okay now since I don't have green green, I'm using the phthalo blue and the yellow. I'm put some greens in here. I'm, I'm gonna make it really light first. Then I'm gonna go darker. But you got the lighter green all in here in the background. So I got a very bright green. And what I'm gonna do is just lightly, well, let's start from here. I want to it's basically the side of the brush getting interesting shapes and patterns if you want this kind of the lighter green out here to kind of linger outward have it hang out hang out here and there okay maybe even down here a little bit but just have it hanging around here and there. I want to bring some of that in the back back here. Like that. But you want the lighter color just hanging around out here. Okay? Because it'll get darker further back. Follow me? Let's go a little darker with that green. Let's put a little, little blue in it. I'm going into the light mixture. I'm going to just darken it just a little bit. And in certain places, another direction, on top of this, you want to give the illusion of it being um, being covered a little bit, okay? A darker green, all in there. Maybe coming out here, some, some, but always in the back of your persistent, your, your other front uh, color in the front. Maybe a little more pronounced. Just further back, that's all. Maybe we have some of them dangling out here. Okay. But it has to go further back. Just tap away. A little bit further back into the picture. You don't have to block it in totally. Just further back in. So there's a change in your greens. Alright, you can tell there's a slight change. And if it's not enough change, enough variance, what I'm going to do is darken it slightly more. I'm just dipping only a fraction of my brush into the water just to loosen up the paint a little bit. I'm going to go back over the previous because I want it darker for the separation. 
I'm not going making a new layer. I just want to darken the one that I previous, previously had. And that's basically all I'm just, just making it a little greener than what I had before. And setting it back in. Now you can see little differences. Okay. And yet you're going to see even more of a change. Now I'm going to add red into the blue, into the yellow, really deep brownish green mix, okay, but I still want it a little more, still maintain its greenness even though it's got that red in there, almost a brownish green, okay, now this will be, let me get beside you here, this will be green in the front. This will be the green coming up and around. That, that'll be fairly dark. Then go up a little bit. Turn it around. Maybe all back here. I still want a little bit of the yellow, the brightness to come through in certain spots. Okay. It's getting a little more of the color. I want some of that darkness to come up even around in here. Like it's, it's being surrounded. That area. Okay. Get some more blue. No, I got enough red. Just need to get a little more blue, a little more yellow. Giving myself a little more blue. Small touch of blue. Reaching over, getting some yellow. I seem to have plenty of red. I'm going to tap into my blue. Tap into a little more red. Mix that in there. A touch of yellow. Let's be greening a little bit. Some more blue. I want it a little darker. Yet still maintain that green. And here we go. I'm taking, I'm taking the brush and just pushing I want it deep. Or deep blue. I'm just tapping, going in different directions to give it a type of leaf shape. In here, a little bit. Make sure you get that corner in there. It's going really dark. Okay. Like so. Still got a little bit in pieces. In through here, a little bit through here. I'm coming around. I'm gonna get to this corner right in here. Okay. <coughs> what I'm going to do, I still got all that color on my brush. But I'm dipping into a little white, a little bit of yellow, just a, a little touch of blue, more white. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. Just in pieces up around the house it gets here and there maybe a little bit dangling up there then I'll just pat in the rest okay just tapping in the rest I'm going to go a little darker I'm dipping into my blue still maintain that greenish shade and we're going to go Maybe from the house here, around the chimney, somewhere around there. Okay, just a little bit in there, here and there. And keep it yet darker. And we're going to go even darker towards the back. More uh, blue, more red, 
really dark. Reddish brown dark. Yeah. Darker still around here. It may be overshadowed a little bit. Don't be afraid of putting texture in there. Look up around there. Now can you tell? The house is obviously here, the roof is up here. And when I color this in, you'll see the, the, the glow. You don't see the glow yet because it's still dominated by the brightness of the tape. Follow me? All right. Once this is tape is uh, removed and you start darkening the house, this glow will just pop out and shine. Right now, it's still overpowered by all the brightness. Okay, so you got to kind of see it in your mind's eye as it takes shape. But remember hidden in here is the other the well and all that in all that paint. Right? So don't worry about that. It's still good to go. The edge of this house put a little little shrubbery back there. It's on the edge here. No more, no less. Just like that. And we still have the grass line uh, to take care of. Okay. And when this is totally dry I'll show you how to put little bits and pieces of light shining through. Maybe a, a ray coming down this way, or maybe I'll have the rays coming in this direction. Who knows? I think maybe probably more in that, that direction. But we'll see where it leads us, okay? Anyway, we got these, uh, the leaves, leaf work done. Got a little uh, of the different colors of the leaves here. I'm going to rinse this brush off. And I'm gonna, maybe when it totally dries, I'll put a little bit of the glow in some of the leaves, just a tiny bit. They'll work, we'll work on the house. All right, so we'll be back and stay tuned.